Turnpike Sports is brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. Welcome to Turnpike Sports. I'm Dave Weishaddle, and as always, I'm joined by my producer and co-host, Doug Weishaddle. Doug, we have a lot of great sports writers on this show, and we have a lot of great sports betting writers on this show. But let me tell you something. We had one a couple uh, weeks ago, Logan Fields, who wrote 2020 Sports Betting or 2020. What, what is the name 2020 of Sports Betting, 2020 Think Sports Like a Pro. 2020 Sports Betting, Think Like a Pro. And he gave us a tip. When all conditions are right, it's always a great bet to bet on any score in the first inning of a baseball game. And wow, has that been paying off? Well, first of all, you threw I'm, I'm giving a threw, plug to Logan Fields. You yeah. threw you threw the uh caveat out there when all the conditions are right. When all the right. conditions are right and you know, I and I'm I'm going to tease it. You pick up 2020 sports betting to find out all about this bet. But wow, can you make a lot of money on that one? That's not a tease, that's a pitch. That's well, <laughs> that's a pitch. But but let me tell you something. First no, I, I actually, I've actually been doing it. Too. Has been paying off. It, wow! It has been <laughs> one tidbit in sports betting advice that I have followed, and it works most of the time. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's still not a hundred percent foolproof. No, but no, it does well, work. Nothing is, but uh, it, it's a really great bet. You should uh, check that out. And uh, boy, sports betting has been great this uh, MLB playoff season uh so it's been great it's I have been so admit, much fun i'm looking forward to getting back into the nba betting i was doing so well with that especially with I, the totals I've and been, all that stuff I, i've been checking out nba preseason but i'm, I'm not pulling the trigger on any preseason i, I, I do not I, I don't do bet on i do not bet on preseason or exhibition just uh I, you know i know some people who do and that's fine but uh Nope, not for me. No, because the teams aren't what they look like in the regular season. They're just finding themselves out. And yeah, yeah. I remember uh, what was it the other night? You mentioned uh, you were watching a Sixers game and they looked totally out of sync. Uh, I think it, it was looked- Sixers and Toronto, and I was like, "Wow, this looks sloppy." Yeah, and that's and, what, and, and that's by what the exhibition way, basketball is preseason basketball should look sloppy. Which, <laughs> but I'm not betting on it. I well, just, well I can't especially with it. the Sixers because they're trying to do life without Ben Simmons. Yeah, right that, now. that's that's a whole mess. That's, that's a whole another drama there. Yes. So, well, we got a great show coming up for you. We got a uh, beat in the house. We got some, uh, I guess, new millionaires uh, that you're going to talk about. So it should be interesting. Uh, then uh, we have a week six NFL picks coming up. We have our book report. And this week, my interview is with Lloyd Levinson. He's an attorney and chief executive officer of the law firm of Cooper Levinson. And let me tell you something. He's one of the most well-known gaming lawyers in this country. And he's also one of the organizers of the East Coast Gaming Congress. It's an amazing conference that if you're part of the gaming industry, you need to attend. This year, it's on October 25th and 26th at Harris Waterfront Conference Center in Atlantic City, and it's just an amazing event. I go there every year. It's one of the best conferences in the country. Absolutely. It's been a busy week in sports, so let's take a trip down the turnpike. 
Today's trip down the turnpike is brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using our promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. Exit 1. GeoComply, which is the company that does the geofencing software, the geolocation uh, technology, announced that it recorded 330 million geolocation transactions during the first four weeks of the current NFL season. Put that in perspective for us. I mean, is that just an incredible number from, say, last year? Gambling always judges itself by this time last year and things like that. So what is that number compared to what happened last year or the years prior? Compared to last year. Oh, Funny okay, you should you say go. that. I go. had that in my notes. The 333 million transactions marked an increase of more than 120% of sports betting volume <laughs> when compared to last year. Well, I... I you know, I I don't know. This time last year, I have no idea how many states allowed sports betting as compared to this year. I, you know, it's, uh, it's we're, it's up, really we're, up, be we're at almost half of the okay. country offering sports betting now. So you know, I would think some of that number is because of new states joining in the sports betting business, right? It's it's all that. It's uh, more people getting used to the online sports betting. It's more people uh, taking a look at you know different states coming on board here. And and again, you also have states that launched before the beginning of the season, at the beginning of the season, and after the beginning of the season. So the first four weeks, you even had a couple of states pop on during the first four weeks, too. Mm-hmm. So their data is included in here, too. I got to tell you, I, I love online sports betting, and that's mainly how I do sports betting. I, I, let me tell you something. I could be in a retail sports book, and I will still place a bet online on my phone instead of getting in line and leaving my chair and things like that. It, uh, retail sports books are a great way to watch football. You see all the football games. You see all the baseball games. You see every game in creation. But you know what? Just sitting there with your phone and just placing the bet is just the greatest feeling in the world. Well, also the kiosks, too. I I rarely go to kiosks. I did a couple times at Parks Casino in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. But you know what? It's still, I I mean, I'm comfortable with my phone. I know where all the buttons are going. I know where I'm looking, and I know how everything is laid out. So uh, it's a very comforting feeling if you're betting on your phone. Well, GeoComply acknowledged that doing this research... The increase in betting volume is a result of more states yeah. that we just talked about. All right. And uh, they also said that one of the other reasons was that players continue to migrate to legal sports books instead of doing the unlicensed ones. Well, sure, yeah. No, that's, that, a, that's another that makes aspect sense. of availability. I don't know why anyone would do illegal sports books because let me tell you something. You win big, hopefully you get your money. And, and if you don't get your money, what happens? You know, what recourse do you have if you're going with an unlicensed overseas sports book? You know, it's just a safer business transaction if you're doing a legal, regulated, state sanctioned book. You know, well, you know, before before sports betting got legalized, some of these offshore or unlicensed books name recognition. You know, there are oh, a couple sure. out there that people realize and they don't even know that they're unlicensed in the I, United States. I've heard I some, think that's a problem that's becoming less and less yeah, pronounced, no. but I think that's a that's a that was a huge problem at the beginning of this. There what's are li- some, licensed, what's not. There are still some media outlets that still give the numbers for some of the unlicensed books, which you know, that's being few and few it's, it's becoming less of a media go to right now cuz you know you got the deals with the licensed books but there are still some media outlets that do give books that unlicensed books their numbers out on their uh, broadcast well before we end this segment you want the top 5 in transactions yeah yeah new jersey topped all of them oh okay <clears throat> statewide okay i yeah. thought you were going to name the books no okay new jersey topped all of them at 70 and a half million 70.5 million transactions okay Com- uh, compared to 49.2 at this time last year, 42.9.2 million. Wow, what a jump. Uh, almost double. What do we have, 21, 22 online sports 24, books now? 24, I believe. Are you right serious? Now. I didn't, <laughs> okay, some snuck in then. Play up just launched. Okay, yeah, no, I didn't. Uh, Superbook. Superbook, yeah. Yep. So, and, uh, you know, yeah, you had a couple other ones that are popping up too. So, but yeah, we're 24, 25, 26, something like that. Wow, okay. 
We're nothing like Colorado. Colorado just added a couple more, too, I believe. Wow. Okay. Uh, Pennsylvania came in second with $64.6 million, up from $47.1 million last year. Pennsylvania second, huh? Yeah. Uh, that's a close second. After that, it's not. It's like a $20 million transaction j- drop. Third state is Michigan. Okay. Yeah. $44.3 million. Illinois, Illinois was, uh, uh, let's see, fifth. They were third. Okay. Illinois just jumped down to fifth. Uh, Arizona was the was the fourth state. Thirty six point nine million transactions. That's a brand new state. Uh huh. And again, Illinois twenty five point eight million. Wow. Fifth place. Okay. So uh, Michigan jumped into there from last year. So what was it? It was uh, number Jersey, one? Pennsylvania, Michigan, Arizona, Illinois. Illinois. Okay. I'm sure people are asking where's Nevada, but I, I got to tell you, Nevada's a tourist town. So you know, if people, a lot of people are going there now after the pandemic, but you know what? They're going in to the retail books because we're going to stay in your hotel room and bet. No, you're going to go to a Nevada will a probably retail book. Nevada will never probably be one of those states that's mostly online like it's a tourist thing that's you know like the states like New yeah. Jersey people are going to see the casinos Colorado is almost even though they have retail books in Colorado they're always in the 90 oh, sure, 95 sure. 95 percent 96 you know wait wait till the winter kicks in oh yeah oh. exit two lifestyle brand for gamers razor all right I love that lifestyle brand designation. Basically, they shall sell shirts, accessories, all that stuff for gamers and esports people. So you know, it's just a brand name out there. <laughs> there are some companies that sell sneakers. I mean, I, we we are selling footwear for because they're basically sitting down doing this activity. But you know, there are sneakers out there. Well, Razor has launched the Champion Start from Within program. Okay, it's the first esports wellness program oh, out there. Okay. Its its uh, goal is to promote healthy and sustainable gaming habits. They're going to be partnering with psychologists, physical therapists, All right. nutritionists, and other experts, experts to provide resources in the form of videos, articles, contacts, uh, just to help esports athletes have uh, uh, maintain their physical and mental wellness throughout their career. Well, that's pretty important. I mean, look, there's a lot of money in esports. That means a lot of pressure on the players. So, you know, it's a great way to cope with uh, something like that, you know? You know what was the most surprising thing I found in this story when I was doing the research for it? The average age of retirement for an esports athlete is 25. Well, th- that goes to what I was saying. That's a lot of pressure for a young person. So, you know, it's good that they have some options to help you know, healthy body, healthy mind, and healthy attitude. Two main reasons for retirement. Physical injuries and mental stress caused by irregular schedules and diets. Well, yeah, I guess they're playing hours on end. They're playing constant. They're also not eating right, especially if uh, I love some of the sponsors for the tournaments, Doritos, uh, (laughs) Kit Kat, uh, basically anything that just is a sugar rush. You know, is a, a sponsor for an esports tournament. Well, l- l- let me tell you something. I, I mean, sitting at a computer, you know, you would think uh, that's not anything physical about it. Look, I played online poker tournaments, and boy, after hours doing that, you know, you stand up during a break, and boy, my back is killing me. My 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 shoulders are tense. My back hurts. You know, it's it's more physical than people think. Well, again, it's a matter of when they're playing, it, you know, stress when you're actually sure. focused on the game. But that stress also has a physical component. Too. Absolutely. And uh, it, it's just crazy. You know, the one thing I, I've seen live poker players do, I, I've never done it, but uh, they get the massages at the table. I mean, <laughs> I remember. I, I've never done that, but uh, I, I've seen people do it. I remember but. there used to be a company at the old World Series of Poker tournaments. Well, yeah, this was like they a couple years back. They might still have them. I don't know Maybe what the World Series I don't is know. doing. But, but there was a company that they used to come in and provide that service yeah. for the World Series players. Oh, no, you you could do it in, um, you know, there different uh, casinos and poker rooms have that. So I, I've just never taken advantage of that. Well, the Champion Start From Within program is going to focus on four key verticals, physical activity, mental health, sleep, and nutrition. Uh, they kind of need that because, oh, uh, that, like I said, a lot of the sponsors are junk food. And yeah. I hate to call it that, but 
you don't you don't see you know um, like GNC supplying some of these uh, esports tournaments with products. Well, I, I I can just go by what I'm doing online poker. You know, you're sitting there and you're snacking in front of it. And now it, it's Halloween time, or, so we have this candy in our house. These little candy things that you give out to kids that, that's not going to last till Halloween. Or you're drinking energy I'm eat, drinks. I'm eating that, yeah. Well, I, I try and stay away from the energy drinks, but some, you know, I just, water is uh, enough for me, but, you know, but no, you're, you're eating terrible there. I mean, you're not having a salad in front of your computer, which I should have, but I don't. Well, topics will range from coping with fatigue, burnout, doing proper sitting postures, that's an important one, I think, especially mm-hmm. if you've got back issues, and exploring stress and recovery concepts. There's a whole slew of articles up there. They, let, uh, let, let me add something, too. They, they should uh, get eye doctors, too, because my eyes kill me after a poker tournament online. So I, I can imagine, I mean, with the lights and the flashing and the graphics sitting there for hours on end, you know, that's, you know there should be an eye drop sponsor. For God's sake! For God's sake! You need Visine? Visine, get on the eSport thing. They they need your help. And also, Razor will be introducing ergonomically designed products to maintain solid form while reducing physical stress when gaming. Exit three. You know, considering a lot of these sports betting companies out there talk about uh, sports data feeds that they use, it's about time we got a slot machine. That did this. Okay. All right. Acres Manufacturing Company, AMC, uh, announced a slew, a new slot machine bonus as part of their Global Gaming Expo lineup. We just had the, the G2E yeah. uh, trade show in Vegas. Yeah, I heard the big uh, thing was cashless gaming. Yeah. So everyone's interested in that. Well, so. uh, hopefully we see this soon because uh, this company already has a deal with a national casino company. Okay. So we may see some of these uh, bonuses in their uh, machines. The new Pay Action Sports Bonus interface. It interfaces a slot machine with live sports data feed and is capable of triggering bonuses based on a wide range of sporting events, occurrences in sporting events, I should say. You know, goal, touchdown, passes, first downs, and the bonus amount will automatically be tied into that feed. When it happens, regardless of what you're doing on the machine, that bonus is triggered. Wow. Okay. So it's it's gonna you know it's it's another melding of sports betting and traditional gaming. Yeah, I know it, it, that should be uh, it should be great for online casinos as well because um, you know it, I, I guess if you like to play your slot machines early in the morning when no sports are being played, well, I guess overseas you can have sports being played. You know, they, I, I guess they have less of an advantage than people who play at night when all the sports are being played. So I, I guess that will affect your time when you play your slot machines in the casinos. Well, again, it's it's a matter of where what the sport is being triggered yeah. on too. I mean, I mean, soccer in the UK. I mean, that's early in the morning. People I mean, are betting if, that early. If, in the if morning. you trigger to a soccer match or, or to soccer itself, the sport of soccer, you got almost twenty four hours. Oh sure. Uh, table tennis. <laughs> table tennis. Yeah. Table tennis. <laughs> I darts. hate to keep bringing up table, table tennis. tennis darts. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, there's constant stuff going on around the world in the world of sports that cricket, you know, cricket is a long game that they have games going days. So they, they can tie this into all these sporting events and right. that will give you bonuses as you're playing the slot machine. Right? Bonus can trigger a period of double payments okay. or any other incentive that they can come up with the casinos that are using this software, this interface. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they can do with this because i'm very curious i wonder if there's a way i'm assuming this is part of the allure of this product where every day you can change it you know like on sundays you can tag target american football on other days you can target basketball other i would days i would think soccer i would think they would do a deal with a uh, sports book operator and use their numbers because you know the sports book operators are already doing this. You might as well make a deal with them and use their data and both benefit from it. I well, would think f- that's in the future. F- funny you should mention sports book operator. All right. Uh their deal is with Penn National Gaming. Oh, there you go. There you uh, go. So it's it's for the casinos, the slots in the casinos that they have. Mm-hmm. But Penn National also is the score. Sure. And also uh Barstool, Barstool Sports. Yeah. So 
you might start seeing some integrations here. I hope so. And uh, I, hope so. I wonder if you're going to be able to tie in, you know, like Fandle. Fandle has, what, the uh, Stardust Casino and yeah. the Fandle Casino. And... I actually really enjoy Stardust. So it's, yeah. uh, it's a good, I'm, uh, I'm wondering good if there's going to be, and DraftKings has a casino now too. Yeah. I'm wondering if you're going to have Barstool Sports or The Score start doing casino games with some of this tied in. Or what is Penn? I, I think Penn National has an online component too. So uh, uh, Hollywood Casino or something. I have no idea. It, it's, uh, it's, I'll check it out. But, yeah, I think this is the step toward merging both sides of the casino industry, the sports betting and the, uh, the slots, the iGaming. This actually could work out to a lot of benefits for different companies. I, I think it's a great idea. Exit 4. And last but not least, it looks like we can't get away without talking NFTs. Ah, non-fungible tokens. Yes. Uh, we've got two to talk about today. All right. Two big names, as a matter of fact. Okay. Usain Bolt is joining the team at Autograph. Uh, Tom Brady's outfit. That's what I was going to say. Is that Tom Brady? That's another big name. Yeah, anyway. there we go. Three big names. But Usain Bolt will be the newest addition to the advisory board, as well as having his very first collection of NFTs. Uh, the uh, It's going to be exclusively available to view on Autograph.io, which is the Autograph website. Uh, I'm going. I'm actually going to that. A couple of days ago, I told you, you know, we're talking about NFTs so much. I mean, I've actually never seen one. <laughs> so I, we're talking about this constantly, but, you know, I'll be I, honest I never you. looked at one. If you, if you didn't know that there was blockchain attached to some of these things mm -hmm. and also that there were certain, you know, things you can unlock with it, you know, they, they look like digital pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's kind of interesting because it's really the underlying technology that makes them special. So to check one out, I would go to autograph.io. That's the right? website for Autograph. I would go there and I would check out and I'd see uh, NFTs. And you can also purchase the purchase these through the DraftKings marketplace. Now, when you say purchase, they they usually have a limited number, right? And they because they unlock other things. Yeah. Okay. So. I was, I was wondering if there was, like, this bidding war I have to get into to get an NFT. Sometimes you sometimes do. Sometimes you do. Okay. Think about, you know. Depends. You can either get a limited supply of a, one NFT or you would have to bid, right? Right. All right. Think of it this way. I have a rare baseball card for sale. You want to purchase it. It's basically something like that. Okay. All right. Uh, you're going to have it's it's um the it's part of the latest installment of the coveted preseason access collection. I don't know why they call it preseason because they're always in season. But anyway, okay. uh, preferential treatment for future drops, which is I guess where preseason comes in. Okay, All it's right. before another drop you of get another autograph thing. Yeah. I guess that's what they're talking and, about. And and actually, it's kind of nice because it's a nice little trick to get more people signed up for autograph because. It only applies to future autograph NFTs. Okay. All right. So you can't, it's not really for any other thing on the DraftKings marketplace. The other person getting involved in the NFT business, Hall of Famer Wade Boggs. Ah, all right. He's going to be partnering with NFT company Firma Pro to develop unique NFT memorabilia of the world's greatest sports and entertainment celebrities. Basically, it sounds like an autograph. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I not, actually have Wade Boggs autograph. I got it at Fenway. Uh, Yankees, uh, Yankees, uh, Red Sox. Yeah, game. yeah. No. That's... I actually got uh, Joe Girardi's. Oh, I got uh, when I he got, was the catcher. I got also um, his rookie season. I have um, Derek Jeter. Yes. Yeah. Well, he's going to be developing his own set of traditional. It's going to be similar to traditional autograph memorabilia, basically. Uh, it's just like what I just said. Going to have a rare card put it up for sale, that stuff. Uh, but it's going to be, this is what they call, uh, a, people can assemble it and showcase asset-backed NFTs. They're not just regular NFTs, they're asset-backed. Which means what? They have, they unlock certain aspects of different different memorabilia, different... Uh, okay. So basically there's something more to it than just the NFT. Oh, okay. Uh, you're going to have the uh, first memorabilia drop coming from Boggs' personal collection, and then he's going to continue on as an advisor, and then there's going to be sports and entertainment celebrities giving memorabilia to Firma Pro to develop even more NFT drops. Wow, uh, okay. Yep. And uh, with the uh, software Firma Pro is using underneath these images, they cannot be reminted. 
in the future. All right. So these are one-offs, and that's it. Okay. You're never going to see a reissue of this. So if you want these, you better yes. get them quick. And it's they're basically the ultimate one-of-a-kind limited edition NFTs because they can't be reprinted. Oh. And today's trip down the turnpike was brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $5 off your first order of $20 or more when using our promo code DRINK19 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. And as always, you can get in touch with Turnpike Sports by calling or texting us at 609-512-5910. That's 609-512-5910. At Turnpike Sports is the show's handle on Facebook and Twitter. At Turnpike Sports Radio is our handle on Instagram. And as always, our email address is info at turnpikesportsradio.com. And don't forget, you can listen to the show via Spotify, Amazon Music, iTunes, Radio.com mobile app, as well as uh, Stitcher and YouTube. You can also watch us on your smart TV, Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV. Head on over to TurnpikeSports.net. You'll be able to watch our video channel there. Well, we got a great show coming up for you. we got a Beat in the House segment. We have a Week 6 NFL Picks. And then we also have a book report. But coming up next, I am talking with Lloyd Levinson, attorney and chief executive officer of Cooper Levinson. But he's also one of the organizers of the East Coast Gaming Congress, which is being held on October 25th and 26th at Harris Waterfront Conference Center in Atlantic City, New Jersey. It's an incredible conference. If you're interested in the gaming business, it's got some of the top people in that business. It's an incredible experience. I go there every year. And we're going to hear about all about it from Lloyd Levinson when we come back with more Turnpike Sports. Is your bathroom looking old and worn out? Want to update it, but you don't know where to start? Then let VCI Bath & Shower show you how to turn that old bath into an aisle of beauty and functionality. Our residential bathroom solutions provide the best value on the market, and our customer service is second to none. Our cost-effective VCI Bath & Shower family of products has what you need. Remodeling our bathroom was a big decision for us. They didn't make a mess out of our house at all. And at the end of the day, we had a beautiful new bathroom. And it was a great experience the whole way through. We have the best monthly payment programs in the industry, with payments as low as $68 per month, or no interest, no payments for 18 months. That's right. Get the bathroom of your dreams now and pay for it in 2021. Call 1-800-308-8291 for a free no-obligation price quote. That's 1-800-308-8291. When you want quality bathroom products at a great price, it's got to be BCI Bath & Shower. That's 1-800-308-8291. Talcum Powder Hotline is a marketing firm that represents lawyers jointly advertising their services, not attorney spokesperson. This is an important medical announcement. Talcum Powder products from some of the best-known brands have been linked to ovarian cancer. Any woman who has used a Talcum Powder product and has been diagnosed with ovarian cancer may be entitled to substantial compensation. Studies show that women with long-term use of Talcum Powder, including baby powder for feminine hygiene, can increase the risk of contracting ovarian cancer. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost, and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to women who should have been warned about the risks of ovarian cancer with long-term use of talcum powder. Call the Talcum Powder Hotline. Call 800-575-9786. 800 Welcome back to Turnpike Sports. I am Dave Weishaddle. For a person who's working in or interested in the gambling industry, one of the most important conferences you can attend is the East Coast Gaming Congress. This year, it's on October 25th and 26th at the Harris Waterfront Conference Center in Atlantic City, New Jersey. With us today, we have one of the organizers of this great event. Lloyd Levinson is an attorney and chief executive officer of the law firm of Cooper Levinson and is one of the most well-known gaming lawyers in this country. And we are lucky to have Lloyd Levinson on the phone with us right now. Lloyd, thanks for joining us. 
It's a pleasure, as always. Uh, Lloyd, I can tell you the gambling industry is emerging from one of the most challenging times in history because of the pandemic. I mean, as a gaming attorney myself, I mean, I had to draft documents I never thought I'd have to draft. I had to draft a service agreement for the cleaning and sanitizing of casino chips, which I have never done in my lifetime. And as I said, you're one of the top gaming attorneys in this country. What was your experience during this pandemic and what were some of the topics and issues the casinos had to tackle during this difficult time? Well, I guess the foremost issue was that uh, they were closed down. Um, I'm sorry. It sounds like uh, they're coming to get me. uh, (laughs) It's the sirens here uh, in Atlantic City. So, but, uh, you know, we had to be closed down, uh, then only, uh, you know, partially opened, and then all the expenses attendant to cleaning uh, and uh, not only for the uh, people that work at the casinos, but the people that um, want to visit the casinos. You know, the most challenging was that people were afraid. I mean, it's the same as the rest of the world. Uh, the gaming business was no different. Uh, you know, it just uh, uh, things were closed. Uh, you know, people were out of work. Just a, a terrible, terrible time. Has the pandemic and the shutdown changed the casino industry going forward? I mean, are there issues that people in the gambling industry are viewing differently because of what just happened during the past year and a half? Well, when the casino you know, retail business was uh, shut down, uh, it had the effect of shooting up the uh, internet and sports. Yep. Uh, so, um, the question people have and, you know, are still having and still analyzing is does the, um, do the people that weren't able to go and gamble in person and took advantage of the online and sports, what happens to those industries, uh, the online and sports? When people are now able to go back and you know gamble at their favorite uh, casino in person, <clears throat> and I think to everybody's uh, pleasure that's involved in the gaming business, uh, pretty much the online and sports has continued to uh, increase without having any uh, detrimental impact on the. Um, on the retail uh, space, people are the, the casino industry uh, has benefited in two different ways. One, they got their business back, <clears throat> maybe not a hundred percent, but they still are able to keep the online and sports business. So, you know, the casinos, of course, don't make all that money. Uh, that you read about that the sports and uh, internet uh, gambling has generated, but it certainly has been a boon to those internet gaming and sports wagering uh, companies from all over the world. Um, so it, it actually has introduced uh, some additional people, uh, gamers, uh, that started to play uh, when they're Casinos were closed, started to play more of the, uh, on the Internet, and uh, it, it seems as if they have not completely forgotten about their uh, in-person gambling, but they've also kept up the new players that they've gotten um, while the casinos were either shut down or partially shut down. Um, and so it's, things are much better off than they were, but there's, you know, there's, there's still – remnants of uh, issues that you have to deal with as a result of the continuing pandemic. In my opinion, this year's East Coast Gaming Congress is the most important for me. I I mean, I'm getting to see people and talk to people I haven't seen in a long time, and I'm getting to see how the gambling industry is moving forward in the coming year. But for those who aren't familiar with the conference, what is the East Coast Gaming Congress? The East Coast Gaming Congress uh, started about 
24 years ago, or I should say a little differently, we're in our 24th annual mm -hmm. East Coast Gaming Congress and Next Gen Gaming Forum. And uh, it started out as a small event uh, and has grown every year to be more and more important for anybody involved in the gaming business. And I'm not just talking about casinos or online gaming or sports wagering. You know, it, 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 it affects the gaming industry is banking. Uh, the gaming industry is investment banking. It's, uh, uh, you know, it, it, there's so many, so many areas of business that, uh, insurance companies. I mean, you just you just name it. Uh, you know, it's a big business. It's a big company. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so uh, it attracts people to the Congress. Um, and ours is, is different uh, in the sense that uh, you know we're not a big uh, trade show like uh, Global Gaming Expo, which mm -hmm. is a wonderful. Uh, 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 exhibition, uh, and uh, you know they impart information that's important, but they also have you know many many hundreds of companies that exhibit their wares. Um, we're different in the sense that we're much more of a think tank with uh, just a small smattering of the. Um, uh, the uh, trade show aspects. We, we leave that to Global Gaming Expo, to where you know where companies uh, can have almost a football field uh, <laughs> size booth. It seems funny calling it a booth when yeah, it's a football right. size, uh, and and that and that's something important for people in, that are involved in the industry uh, to uh, attend. And for those companies to, you know, show their wares, uh, we we have about five or six hundred people, uh, and we've had uh, uh, every sitting governor mm -hmm. uh, in those twenty four years has come and spoken. In fact, Governor Phil Murphy is going to speak again this year at our uh, as our luncheon keynote, uh, and they. Uh, uh, you know, there's a reason why people go and the reason why people want to talk because, you know, it, it's a level of attendee and a level of speaker that is unparalleled. You have some of the greatest speakers at the Congress. I mean, it's the people who make the policy, who make the news in the gaming industry all year. Uh, who are some of the speakers that you have this year? Well, I want to start with saying that we got two new co-organizers and co-producers of the show. Uh, besides Spectrum Gaming Group, which is uh, a co-founder with my law firm of the show 24 years ago, uh, this year we have uh, eSports Entertainment Group and uh, SI Sports, or Sports Illustrated wow. Sportsbook, as two of the additional to Cooper Levinson and Spectrum, to the additional... Um, or co-organizers and co-producers, uh, and you know the esports entertainment group is the uh, the the, uh, the top of the line when it comes to esports, and you know everybody knows Sports Illustrated. Yep. Uh, you know most every uh, person, mostly male, but now more and more females, mm -hmm. uh, have had subscriptions to Sports Illustrated for. Dozens and dozens of years, uh, and it should it should sort of let everybody know how uh, important this Congress is when there's two companies like uh, SI Sports and Esports Entertainment Group, uh, two companies who felt the uh, event was important enough that they wanted to make sure that the world knew that they were a co-organizer and co-producer, and they've done a great job and helping us out. But getting back more particularly to your question with regard to speakers, yeah. um, we have about nine CEOs from the top gaming companies 
in the uh, country who are this year going to be giving uh, their particular insights as sort of mini keynote uh, uh, presentations. Um, so that is sprinkled throughout the event are uh, those individuals. Uh, and I you know, just in invite you to have your uh, listeners uh, just look on online uh, to uh, uh, to our website, uh, which is, uh, and they can register at ecgc.us, uh, and they will be able to see all of them. I mean, there's so many of them. It's, you know, hard, I'm afraid to pick out <laughs> some of them and not give you all of them because you know it can't possibly. Uh, determine which ones are, you know, more important than others. Uh, but, uh, you know, as far as, for example, the, uh, the keynote uh, CEOs, <clears throat> excuse me, you got someone like James Allen, Jim Allen from the Hard Rock Seminole Gaming Group, Tom Rieg, who's the CEO of Caesars, David Cordish from the Cordish Companies, uh, you know, we have uh, Mohegan, Foxwoods, um, uh, PCI Gaming, which is the uh, company that bought from Sands Bethlehem uh, the casino hotel in uh, in Bethlehem, uh, Pennsylvania, um, Wind Creek. Um, Greg Carlin, who's the chief executive officer of Rush Street. Jay Snowden, who's the CEO of Penn National. Bill Miller is the head of the American Gaming Association. Um, Joe Papano, who's the co-chief executive with Sightline, you know, not a CEO of a, of a gaming company per se, but mm -hmm. if you don't have payment processing, you really don't have much of a... Uh, <laughs> you don't have a casino. Right, um, and particularly uh, sports and, and, and Internet. Yeah. Uh, we have a... Uh, uh, an iGaming versus iLottery panel. Uh, we have a panel on building casino floors of tomorrow, um, an eSports, uh, a women in gaming panel, which is a very important one that uh, uh, we like to uh, make sure that everybody knows about that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then uh, talking about East Coast gaming, uh, you know, from new areas and, and uh, new potential casinos in uh, Virginia, for example. Um, so, you know, th those are just uh, some of the uh, areas. And, we, and, we, and we, we go outside a bit of the um, traditional gaming when we talk about driving revenue through food and beverage opportunities uh, and uh, how Cisco has helped us uh, understand that aspect of uh, being in the gaming business. So, you know, you, you, there's there's so much that we have. Uh, I'm really doing it, not doing it justice, um, with you know a short period of time. I just need you all to go look at it and uh, and make sure that you sign up and attend. You know, you mentioned one of my favorite panels of the East Coast Gaming Congress, and that's the discussion on the gaming floor of the future. I mean, recently I just spoke with Scott Sabella, who's president of Resorts World Las Vegas, and he talked about their cashless gaming system and even hinted at the possibility of allowing cryptocurrency on the gaming floor. I mean, you speak to a lot of top-level people in the gaming industry. Do you see gaming and casinos moving in that direction? Um, not for a while. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, no, I, I, you know, I, I think we're going to move a little slower now than maybe everyone thought things were going to move. Uh, you know, this, uh, pandemic has really, I believe slowed, slowed some, uh, some things down. Uh, and I think people are going to be a little careful on moving too fast. Um, uh, but there's, there's no question that, uh, you know, we we have to uh, build casino floors of tomorrow, uh, and you, you've got to keep up with the Joneses. Yeah. 
you know, what needs to change, how will it change, what will it cost to change. Um, you know, there's uh, you know, people on that panel, Rick Meitzler, who is the CEO of no Novomatic Americas, Joe Lupo, who is the president of Hard Rock Atlantic City, Jackie Grace, who is a senior VP and general manager of Tropicana in Atlantic City, a uh, Caesars uh, company, and uh, John Connolly, who is the chief executive officer of Interblock and someone who's been around the, despite his uh, youthful looks and and relatively young age, uh, he's been around the gaming business a long, long time. Uh, so, you know, that's a very exciting program that we're looking forward to um, having everybody be uh, uh, listened to and uh, ask questions and uh, get answers. I also see on the second day of the Congress, you have an update from the New Jersey Control Commission. Uh, we, we had uh, James Plosis on the show a few months ago discussing Atlantic City and the casino industry in New Jersey. Now, Cooper Levinson is the premier gaming law firm in New Jersey and in the country, by the way. How do you see the health of casinos in Atlantic City as we emerge from this pandemic? They've had a wonderful summer, uh, you know, especially when you... You, you know, we're just coming out of this horrible time in, in everybody's life. Uh, and so the weather was nice. The weather was warm. The boardwalk and the marina areas were chock full of people. Uh, the, uh, the percentage of rooms that were occupied was sig very significant. So that's you know it's it, you always have to worry if you're in a climate like you know New Jersey uh, you have to worry about what's going to happen in you know November December January February mm -hmm. uh, but I think they've gotten off to, to such a great restart that um, the worry that we've always had about those you know four or five months in the middle. Uh, is less than it has been in previous years. There's a lot of optimism, uh, and we just got to make sure that the people, um, you know, uh, believe in Atlantic City. Uh, you know, there's a lot of money that's being spent. Uh, Bally's uh, Casino Hotel is now um, owned by uh, the. Um, uh, the former Twin River people, uh, and they're putting well over a hundred million dollars into upgrading rooms and in the rest of the property. Uh, there was just an announcement the other day at Caesars that uh, Nobu is coming. Wow! To uh, to Caesars not only as a restaurant but uh, as a uh, as being responsible for upgrading uh, the rooms, uh, you know, there's a lot of money that was pledged by the Caesars companies to uh, the improvement of uh, Atlantic of their Atlantic City properties. So, you know, you, you, you have to you have to spend money to make money. Yeah, uh, and that's exactly what uh, the various casinos are doing here. Um, there's going to be a uh, a new majority owner, uh, if all things goes well, of the ocean property, uh, and a lot of money is being spent there, um, and a new management company that's going to own it. Um, the uh, uh, the Illich family uh, out of Detroit, and so um, you know, it, 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 there's a, a lot. That's going to happen in Atlantic City that has started happening, and there should be uh, smiles uh, on the faces <laughs> of not only the, the brick and mortar companies, but you know it's uh, it's a place also where companies from all over the world are uh, involved in sports wagering and in uh, internet casino games. 
Well, I, w- I want to ask you about money being spent in Atlantic City. I, I know another panel at the East Coast Gaming Congress is on esports, and I know Atlantic City and Stockton University received big investment to create an esports innovation center. I mean, do you feel that investments like this will lead to casinos incorporating esports into their offerings? And is this the way to get the millennials onto casino properties? And um, I, and I've actually had guests come on this show, and we're thinking, well, maybe Atlantic City. City will become another hub of esports. Do you think uh, esports is in the future for casinos in Atlantic City? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, one of the skins, sports skins that Bally's has awarded uh, has been to uh, the esports entertainment group. Uh, as you know, you know, there's you, you, there are limits on the number of brands that you can have in Atlantic City uh, with regard to sports and with regard to uh, Internet casino games, uh, three for sports and five for Internet. Uh, and so, um, uh, unless I have that backwards. <laughs> but in any event, uh, the, uh, it's clear that uh, Bally's has... Um, some confidence, and so does Esports Entertainment Group, some significant co- confidence in having uh, esports be uh, part of, a significant part of the future uh, in Atlantic City. Now, without a doubt, what has changed the gambling industry across this country is sports betting. I mean, here in New Jersey, as you know, we have 22 online sports books, and all the casinos in Atlantic City have a sports book on their property. How crucial has sports betting become to the profitability of a casino? Well, as I mentioned early on in this conversation, the casinos themselves don't make a lot of money from sports wagering. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you, you need, if you want to be a company that uh, gets one of those skins for sports wagering, you have to. Um, sign up with a casino. You can't just open up your own sports, uh, whether it's retail or online. You know, you have to be uh, sponsored by uh, a casino. Uh, And so the casinos uh, make some money, but it's those other companies, the online casino companies uh, and the sports wagering companies that you know, they, they make the bulk of the uh, profits from, from that. So uh, it's certainly important. I mean, in, in, you know, nowadays you pretty much have to have a retail sports operation going on in your casino. Yeah. Uh, in fact, you can't go online or have an online operation unless you have a retail sports operation mm-hmm. in your casino. Uh, and obviously, you know, led by, you know, Companies like DraftKings and FanDuel or whatever, you know, I mean, they're, you know, they're scooping up a large percentage of the uh, online sports. So it, it's 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 important, uh, but it's less important to the casinos uh, profit-wise than it is to the companies that are spending all that money on marketing and uh, and the like. Now, over the last couple of months, I've interviewed the heads of gambling at the PGA Tour and NASCAR, and they both said they want to increase the amount of betting on their sports. Now, I remember only a couple of years ago, the pro leagues were saying, you know, the worst thing you can do in life is place a bet on sports. As an attorney, are you surprised at the change of heart the pro leagues have and the deals that they're making regarding sports betting? Well, if it weren't for New Jersey <laughs> challenging PASPA, uh, we, we still might, you know, <laughs> be in the same position that uh, we were in, and so we wouldn't even be talking about sports wagering. Uh, but because New Jersey fought the leagues and the NCAA uh, and uh, and won at the United States Supreme Court, uh, you know, it took all those people, not necessarily all of them, but it took so many people out of the 
uh, illegal sports betting uh, operations and put them in the you know legitimate regulated taxed uh, areas of uh, of sports wagering. So you know there's it's obvious that people enjoy gambling on sports. They've always enjoyed gambling on sports. It just was not legal. Mm -hmm. So now with it being legal and PASPA being overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court, uh, you know, more and more people are involved uh, because there was plenty of people who, uh, although bettors were never really prosecuted or anything for being involved in making bets uh, offshore, uh, now, you know, people are feel much, obviously much more comfortable since it's regulated and, and taxed uh, to get away from the, uh, the um, uh, illegal operations. So it's become you know, much more of a, you know, well, not much more, it's a purely reputable business now. It's legal, uh, it's regulated, uh, people feel more comfortable in uh, in uh, in gambling uh, with companies that are licensed, uh, and uh, and so the also the um, the companies uh, that uh, are at the leadership of all this, um, you know, are major uh, public companies. Uh, and which have a lot of money and a lot of money to educate uh, gamblers, uh, and so it's it's an absolutely uh, amazing event when PASPA was overturned to take a an industry that was uh, in the uh, undercover or on the, on the illegal uh, areas of life, and now uh, and once and once the Leagues started to realize that a hey, this uh, train is going to leave uh, is, has left the station uh, without them. That it's better for them to uh, to join as opposed to keep fighting. Well, one of the results of the pandemic, as you said, has been the incredible growth of online casinos and iGaming. I mean, in New Jersey, it helped the gambling industry during the pandemic. I mean, it's growing in states like uh, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Connecticut is about to go live with it. Where do you see online gambling going from here? Do you, do you see more and more states jumping on board after they seeing the re- amazing revenue figures from the states that already have it? Yeah, I mean, you know, as an aside... Uh, when uh, New Jersey started uh, the online gaming, uh, not the sports wagering, started the online gaming, uh, predicted in the budget uh, of New Jersey for a year was uh, something like over a million dollars that uh, <laughs> uh, would the state of New Jersey earn from, uh, from that type of gaming. And people were sort of snickering at that, uh, and maybe after even after the first couple of months, they were still snickering. Well, now <laughs> I think we're, we're either there or we've now exceeded that uh, amount. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I see the other states that don't have uh, online gaming; uh, they have sports. I think they're sitting up and taking notice of the fact that. Uh, they're leaving a lot of money on the table by not having uh, an online uh, sports industry in their state. So uh, I don't think it's going to be too long till some new states come on board with online gaming, uh, online casino gaming, or the um, uh, the ones that just have uh, sports now looking themselves in the mirror and saying, you know what, why not? Mm -hmm. Lloyd, the East Coast Gaming Congress, like you said, uh, 
is also having a panel on women in gambling. Uh, it's such an important issue across this country, and I think you're one of the few conferences that actually has a panel on it. How important was it for you to include a panel for women in gaming? Uh, extremely important. I mean, the uh, you know many industries, including uh, gaming, uh, do not have enough women uh, at in in leadership positions. Uh, you know, we would have liked to have had uh, women CEOs giving these uh, individual keynote addresses, uh, but there aren't any uh, CEOs of companies, of casino companies that have more than one uh, casino under its belt. So all of these uh, CEOs that are giving keynote addresses um, uh, are CEOs of multiple um, casinos, not just you know one in one jurisdiction, uh, multi uh, casino jurisdictions. Uh, and so, um, nothing we like more than to have uh, women to see women. In those in those roles, and you, you'll see it. There's just, there's just too many absolutely brilliant women that are in gaming. It's just you know it's it's been difficult uh, for women in general, not only in the gaming business, but in general to you know crack through that glass ceiling. Uh, you know, but uh, it's happening in other industries, and it's going to start happening more in uh, in the gambling industry. Uh, we, we, we're, we're excited for the women on the women in gaming panel to, uh, give their thoughts on, you know, what can help women in gaming, uh, get to a place, uh, where, you know, it's been traditionally more, you know, men than it is women. Lloyd, can you remind the audience again, what's the website for the East Coast Gaming Congress and how can people register for it? Well, they can register uh, right by going to the uh, the website, um, and you're going to laugh because I've never registered. Uh, <laughs> but I know I know that uh, you can go to ecgc. Uh, dot us to register. So um, that is something that I encourage your listeners to to go. Register. I mean, one thing that's also very important to point out: we are probably the most inexpensive by far yes. of uh, conferences or congresses in the gaming business. Uh, you know, we're not in this. Mike Pollock and myself, uh, Mike from Spectrum Gaming Group, and uh, myself. I mean, we, we we didn't start this 24 years ago uh, for to make money. Uh, we, we, I, I can't say we're doing it pro bono. You know, we do get some advantages uh, of, uh, you know, our names out there, our company names. But, um, you know, we, we'd rather have more people of a, you know, a, a, a uh, higher level of attendee. Uh, and uh, we don't need to make money uh, from this show. We'd rather have a sold-out show than worrying about some of these other conferences, which, uh, charge much, much more and have fewer people. I mean, the networking that goes on at the East Coast Gaming Congress, uh, you know, has been missed uh, the last couple of years because of the pandemic. Uh, and the opportunity, the, it's obvious, the more people that you have to network with, the more yep. uh, potential there is to move what, you know, your business forward. So uh, we'd rather keep the price down significantly and keep the um, numbers of uh, attendees high. Lloyd Levinson, Chief Executive Officer at the law firm of Cooper Levinson and organizer of the East Coast Gaming Congress, which is being held October 25th and 26th at Harris in Atlantic City. Thank you so much for joining us and telling us all about the event. This is a conference I look forward to attending every year, and I'm so glad it's back live in Atlantic City. Thanks for your time, and you know what? I'm going to see you there. No, very good. Looking forward to it. 
Stick around. More Turnpike Sports right after this. Free stuff is awesome, but free stuff that will spice up your bedroom is even better. Just go to adamandeve.com and select almost any one item for 50% off, and then we'll load on the free stuff. Just enter this very exclusive code, BABE16, at checkout, and you'll get 10 tantalizing free gifts, including a sexy item for him, a special toy for her, and a third item you'll both enjoy. Ooh. And Six extra special bonus items that are sure to rev your engine, pique your curiosity, Mm. and even blow you away. Plus, free shipping. Always sent in discreet packaging. Go to adamandeve.com now. Get 50% off plus the 10 free gifts when you enter the exclusive offer code BABE16. That's BABE16. Because without it, no No free stuff. stuff. That's BABE16 at adamandeve.com. The East Coast Gaming Congress returns for its 24th year on October 25th and 26th at Harris Waterfront Conference Center in Atlantic City. As the largest gaming conference in the eastern United States, the East Coast Gaming Congress features keynote addresses from top gaming executives, leaders from gaming suppliers, sports betting operators, lotteries, and government agencies. In addition to traditional brick-and-mortar gaming, the East Coast Gaming Congress focuses on cutting-edge issues that range from sports betting to esports to iGaming. And for the third consecutive year, New Jersey Gov- Governor Phil Murphy will deliver the State of Gaming keynote address. Over 500 gaming operators, analysts, attorneys, and other gaming-related professionals are expected to attend ECGC. Go to ecgc.us for the full two-day conference schedule and registration. Early bird savings are available, too. The 24th Annual East Coast Gaming Congress and Next Gen Gaming Institute on October 25th and 26th at Harris Waterfront Conference Center in Atlantic City. Register today at ecgc.us. People gotta win sometime. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a giant colorful check to deposit. Bean the House is brought to you by BetMGM Casino. Play your favorite casino games at BetMGM Online Casino. Slots, table games, live dealer games, everything you love about Atlantic City and Vegas, all online at BetMGM. Don't wait. Join in the fun now. Go to BetMGM Casino, create an account using our promo code TURNPIKE, and become a verified player. New players get $25 free when signing up, plus a first deposit bonus up to $1,000. That's promo code TURNPIKE at BetMGM. GM.com for a 100% deposit match up to $1,000 plus $25 free. Grab a lion's share of the fun at BetMGM.com. Must be 21 years or older to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And welcome to this week's edition of Beating the House, where we celebrate the casino wins, the slot machines, online slot machines, uh, Kino, bingo. Basically, if it happens in a casino or a sports book, we're going to talk about it. You know, and I uh, I read the notes prior to our recording this, and then when I mentioned the new millionaire in my opening, uh, you're, I guess you're going to start with it from Indiana, right? We uh, actually, this is our second story from Four Winds South Bend wow, in okay. South Bend, Indiana. Uh, this was a five dollar eighty eight spin on a slot machine, uh, the Dancing Drums Explosion slot machine. Okay. <laughs> Dan- By the way, dancing drums. That's the greatest part about this segment. You mentioned slot machines I have never heard of, or I've never played, or I've never seen. So n- now I'm going to, w- when I jump on these online casinos in New Jersey, I'm going to type in dancing drums explosion. Well, I'm going to tell you all about it right now. Okay. Dancing drums explosion slot machine is an Asian themed slot machine by Shuffle Master. Okay. Uh, in collaboration with SG Digital Scientific Games. Uh, it's five reels with high paying drums and two foo bat. Wild symbols. I don't know what that means. What's a foo bat? It's a bat. It's a bat? Oh, mm-hmm. It's a type of bat? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we have a five five $5.88 bet on the slot machine, the uh, Dancing Drums Explosion, and the progressive hit to an astounding $1.2 million. Wow. And, and I'm assuming uh, since you didn't say anything yet, they didn't give their name? No name. No name? Okay. I, I wouldn't either. I, I wouldn't. Let, let me tell you something. I, I don't think I would even say anything to anyone if I won if I won one point two million dollars. Well, the jackpot was the biggest of all the big hits recently at the four Indiana Michigan casinos owned by the Pokagon Band of Potawatomi Indians. We actually talked about this 
on the show last week. The previous uh, winner was uh, the 220000 top prize playing the Dollar Storm Caribbean Gold Machine. Okay. That was at the Four Winds in New Buffalo, Michigan. Okay, but this one was actually in Indiana? This one was in South Bend, Indiana. Okay, all right. We actually talked about this one, I think, uh, last week as well. Uh, at this casino, Four Winds, South Bend, and South Bend, Indiana, a player from St. Anne, Illinois, again, didn't give the name, playing the triple diamond st- triple diamond strike slot machine. Okay. I've That's another one I don't one, know no. too much about. Hit a $202,000 jackpot wow. at this casino. Wow. Okay. So uh, four wins are paying out over the last couple of weeks. Moving back over to Las Vegas, we're going to the Rampart Casino. Okay. I had to look up the Rampart Casino. I, I don't know anything about the Rampart. It's actually called the Rampart Casino at the Resort at Summerlin. Okay. All right. Uh, it's a elegant 50,000-square-foot casino, 1,600 slot machines, two dozen table games, 300-seat uh, bingo room. Oh, okay. And they have a race and sports book. They, oh, okay. It, it's it's uh, their own branded sports book, by the way. Sounds like a nice casino. It's it's actually beautiful. Go to the website. It's actually a beautiful looking place. They've got golf courses around it. Oh, okay. It's not downtown. It's in Summerlin. Yeah, I, I so. guess the suburbs kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have a lucky Las Vegas local hitting a jackpot on the Dollar Storm machine. Never heard of the Dollar Storm machine either. Dollar Storm is made by Aristocrat. All right. And the casino can set up to be a progressive game or a non-progressive game. It could be just you know single hits. Uh, was voted top slot product at the 2020 Global Gaming Awards. Wow. Okay. It was his Dollar Storm Machine, the right? Dollar Storm Machine. All right. Uh, the award-winning Dollar Storm yes. Machine. Okay. Uh, the woman turned a... It's a woman. It was a, She withheld her name. Okay. Well... The okay. woman turned a $1 bet into $164,000. Wow. She hit the Combo Super Grand Progressive, uh, and she didn't even pose for a picture. <laughs> well, I, I guess if you're not going to give your name, usually you would not want your picture out there. But, you know, I, but I've seen pictures with people with the big check, but they didn't give their name. So, well, this one, they didn't get on what you want. She do. didn't get in the picture. She didn't. She didn't give her name. So what they had to do in the press release, they showed a picture of the slot, the oh, winning well, slot. Okay. Now, I, I actually went to the website when I found out all this information about what the Rampart Casino is, they actually have a page of jackpot winners. Great, great. And uh, I was looking through it. The last time they had a jackpot this size was July 2nd of this year, and it was 164000 again. Wow. On the same machine, Dollar Storm. It, the same the, kind of machine. The same, the same, same Not the exact brand, same machine. The, sa- the, the same, same brand. brand of machine. Wow, Dollar Storm. Dollar Storm. I got to check that one out if it pays that well. But uh, yeah, no, they they've had a couple, you know, ten thousand, twenty thousand dollar jackpots See, I, I, between then and there. During this segment, I write down all the names of the different slots, and I kind of look for them on online. You know, you're, you're in New Jersey, you're, you have all the online casinos, and you have all the online slot machines, so you might as well look at the ones that are paying off. Going further west, we have the California Lottery. Oh, California! Well, someone just won Powerball. Out there. That's that, exactly what we're going to talk about. That. Okay, all right. We have a winner. Who bought the ticket at an Albertson's grocery store in Morrow Bay, a coastal town in the San Luis Apizbo County, uh, roughly halfway between Los Angeles and San Francisco. Uh, they bought the ticket at the Albertsons, and it is worth six hundred ninety nine point eight million dollars. I would think by you know by the time this airs, I would they assume would, they they've would gone. have the name of the person well i you know i'm not sure in california law i know i know in new jersey if you win the lottery you know you can't withhold your name they 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 you have to give your name out i wonder if in california you can remain anonymous like these slot winners i wonder if they can just say you know i want to remain anonymous well you know in some states they allow your attorney to go pick it up okay well that's good so i, I don't know exactly how california works to pick well, up the, of the way prizes. it works usually if someone wins a big lottery is it's going to take about a week because number one they got to Get a lawyer or consult with the lawyer if they already you're, have. You're then assuming, get a financial planner. Because you're you're assuming you know, that's what these people, some of these people are doing. Some of these all, people just run and get. I the money. have all that ready. I'm just waiting for the big winning ticket that I have. That's so, the only uh, missing that's, piece. That's huh? the only missing piece is the actual. <laughs> Everybody else winning is on ticket. call. You gotta, yeah, no, yeah. no, I I know exactly what I'm going to do if I win something big. I just have to win something big. The 700 million dollar Powerball jackpot is the seventh largest lottery jackpot to date, and it's the fifth largest Powerball jackpot. Didn't Powerball or Mega Millions <laughs> get to one point something billion at I, one point? I don't have to break any records. I no, do, I would just love anything you want to give me. The outlet 
this is the first time this has been reported because uh, I actually uh, was surprised to see this in the news report. The uh, store, the Albertsons Grocery Which Store. they get money. They get a percentage. $1 million. Wow, that's great. That's because of the $700 million. Yep. I don't know yep. what the percentage worked out to be. Yeah, for I, that, I, did, but. I, I would guess it might be different in each state, but they get a percentage of the winning ticket. Yeah, I think it's also different. I for wonder the, if it's a percentage of before or after taxes. So I, 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 I also know. think it's a there's a difference between what type of place is selling it to, whether it's a variety store, mm-hmm. a supermarket, or whatever else, or a tobacco store. Wherever selling, I think everyone's got some different tiers too. Okay, uh, jackpot was the uh, record streak dating back to June fifth of forty consecutive draws without a grand prize winner. Wow! Uh, last but not least, we're going to hit it off with a Virginia lottery uh, jackpot. We've actually been doing a lot of Virginia lottery stories lately. A lot, of, a lot of money being won on the online side. Okay, this is the Virginia online lottery. Yes, okay. well, it's still run by the Virginia lottery, okay, but okay. the online games. Uh, Susan H of Aldi. I didn't even know there was a town called Aldi. Uh, Aldi, Aldi? A-L-D-I-E. Okay. Uh, won the largest ever crown jewel jackpot. They're going to keep saying that because the crown jewel, ja- crown jewel jackpot just recently launched. Okay. So we're going to uh, see that often. That's a good promotion. Releases. Hey, yep. you know, have someone win it. It's a great promotion. She, Susan played the VIP Ultra game, which is one of the games that's linked to the crown jewel jackpot. It's a link progressive. All right. Uh, won $209,000. Wow, great. Yeah, the uh, three games that you can play for this jackpot, Play VIP Ultra, RoboCash, and Savannah Adventures. So congratulations to all our winners this week. Uh, looking forward to talking about some more winners next week. Uh, if you have any uh, news for this segment, uh, info at turnpikesportsradio.com is the uh, address to send the news reports to. Our week six NFL picks are next, so stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports. Tax Solutions Now is a complimentary referral service that connects callers to companies that provide tax services. Money matters. If you owe thousands in back taxes to the IRS, how much can Tax Solutions Now save you? I pay less than I owe. That's right. Money matters. So call Tax Solutions Now and get the IRS off your back. Since 2014, Tax Solutions Now has been a leader in the tax resolution industries. Remove wage garnishments, property liens, fines, and penalties. Qualify for the Fresh Start program or even uncollectible status. How much can Tax Solutions Now save you? I owed the IRS over $10,000. I paid a fraction of what I owed. Call now to reduce or even eliminate your back taxes. I called Tax Solutions Now and got the IRS off my back. Thanks. You saved us a ton of money. Money matters. How much can Tax Solutions Now save you call now and find out call 800-683-7377 800-683-7377 800-683-7377 having a rough morning after a long night out that's why there's morning recovery morning recovery is the flagship product of more labs and it's scientifically engineered to outsmart rough mornings Use promo code RADIO15 at morelabs.com and get 15% off of your first purchase of Morning Recovery or any of their other great products. That's RADIO15 at morelabs.com to take advantage of this great promo of 15% off of your first purchase. Morning Recovery from More Labs, so you can work hard, play hard, and live life without compromise. This week's Turnpike Sports Pro Pick segment is brought to you by PointsBet Online Sportsbook. Take advantage of their no-juice NFL game lines every week of the NFL season. That's right, PointsBet is giving higher payouts and you get 100% of the profits. PointsBet also offers its customers live streaming and game tracker animations. Get in the game and place live bets even faster. Join PointsBet today and use promo code BET21 and receive two risk-free bets up to $2,000. Again, that's two risk-free bets up to $2,000 when you sign up at PointsBet.com with our code BET21. Stream live, bet live, win fast with PointsBet. Must be at least 21 years or older to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. New customers only. Problem gambler? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And welcome to the week six of our NFL wow, pick segment. week six, huh? Oh, it's been zipping by already it's uh, been a quick uh, season and uh actually last week um you did pretty well i did uh three and oh yep 
three and zero. That that's the first time you went this this season. Yeah. Well, I had a pretty uh, decent week as well, two and one myself. Uh, I've actually uh, been a little surprised. This is usually when I start to fall off the the grid here a little bit, mm-hmm. going a little screwy with some of my picks. But okay. um, <laughs> you know, uh, right now, season long uh, to date, right now is uh, I'm still in the lead, eleven and four and one, uh, eleven four and zero. Sorry. And you were you were now seven six and two. All right, you have okay. two pushes. All right. Um, I'll tell you, it's kind of interesting to see you have pushes. I had I had four last year. I didn't have any last year. I don't think. Uh, I may be wrong, but I don't think I had any. No, pushes. no, you had a pushless year last year. Okay, pushless season. All right. Uh, but uh, like I said, we're in our NFL Week Six picks. Uh, as always, we'll do three games. We do spreads. And totals. We don't do the money line. No, nope, no. Nope. Uh, so um, I saved that for my parlay, which go. I uh, got a money line parlay this week too. So it was a very good weekend for me. Week five was very, very good to me. I have to admit, the only thing that saved my betting weekend was a single game four leg parlay for the Monday nighter. Oh, okay. I lost every single bet I made okay. over the weekend. So, uh, well, yeah, you, you made know. it up on Monday night. That's yeah. the important thing. L- luckily for the show, I went two and one, so I was okay there. But the actual so money you, betting. So you had a as bad a week as the NFL kickers had this week. Oh, that was an amazing game. You had that, that game, game, right? I, I, I didn't. I didn't game. put any money on that game. That was but, uh, my one loss because no yeah. one wanted to go for the touchdown in the uh, <laughs> yeah, overtime. Right. I wish they had tried it. And of course, uh, Monday night ended up with the uh, kicker missing a couple, so uh unbelievable. Oh, oh I, I you know, at halftime I thought I had lost that game. Oh, Monday night? Yeah. Halftime I put a in-game bet on the uh, Baltimore Ravens and it worked out very, very well for me. So, uh Thank you, Baltimore Ravens, and uh, thank you, Colts, for screwing it up. Well, I'm just glad they came out and what was it, 65 points they scored, something like that, 61 oh, yeah. oh, points. Oh, you had yeah. the over? I had the over 15 okay. and a half in a halftime. I just was not expecting them to actually score anything because it was so low scoring. But they came back, and wow, boy, did they come back. The, you know, the Baltimore finally found their tight end the entire second half, so it was actually cool to see that. But anyway... Going back to our picks for this week, I went first last week. You can go first this week. Oh, okay. I My first game is the Minnesota Vikings versus the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers are favored by a point and a half with an over-under of 46. Uh, last week, the Carolina Panthers showed me something, that they weren't as good as everyone thought they were in their loss to the Eagles, which was an a- absolutely amazing comeback. I'm an Eagles fan, so it was fun to see. Um, you know... It, Darnold did not look good. Three interceptions, and uh, and this week they're playing an even more talented team in the Minnesota Vikings, and I think the result's going to be the same for the Panthers. The Panthers have lost six of their last nine home games, and I see that trend continu- continuing this week. I'm taking the underdog Minnesota Vikings. Okay, my first game of the week is the Arizona Cardinals at the Cleveland Browns. The Browns are favored by two and a half. There's an over under of fifty and a half. By the way, I have this game too, so I'll I'll do this game next, when, and uh, we'll compare what we have. Well, I was just the Browns Chargers game was amazing to watch. It was just all offense. Uh, the two teams combined for over a thousand yards of offense. Uh, almost uh, 90 points was scored in that game. I think it was 89, 88, something like that. Okay. And it was just really fun to watch. Oh, I see a total bet coming. Yes. Okay, all right. I telegraphed So we're not one. really going up against each other. I no, actually no, did no, a, no. a team. Uh, the Cardinals have scored more than 30 points per game in all but one of their games this season. And I found this interesting. The Browns' defense is averaging just giving up 20 points a game. But the two times they face good offenses, the Chargers and Chiefs, they allowed the Chargers to do 47 and the Chiefs to score 33 against them. So I'm actually thinking when they face another high-powered offense like Arizona, you actually may see another high-scoring game here. Uh, I'm going with the over 50 and a half. All right, well, I'm taking this game to Arizona Cardinals versus Cleveland Browns. Browns are favored by two and a half, and as you said, the total's 50 and a half. I mean, I think this is going to be the game of the week, and I think this is going to be decided in the very last seconds. Check this one out. The Cardinals have won four of their last five road games, 
and Cleveland Browns have won five of their last six home games. Something's got to give in this one, and so I think it's going to be a great game. More importantly for me, Arizona is 4-1 and one against the spreader in their last five road games, and that's what I'm going by when picking this game. I like Arizona in this situation, so I'm going with the underdog Arizona Cardinals. I'm still surprised they're an underdog. To be yeah, well, with you. yeah. When you get uh, we get num, that's that's why I went with it. Yep. I mean, you, you, they're getting they're getting points. So uh, hey, give my, it to me. my next game: the Dallas Cowboys favored by four at the New England Patriots. There's an over under forty nine and a half. Okay, I have this game too. So this is going to be a weird one. All right, Dallas is coming into this game five and zero oh against the spread, and the over is four and one in their five games this season. So. Uh, I, I I think right now the way the Cowboys are playing, everything's clicking for them. They look like a lock right now, anyway, to win the NFC East. Sure. I don't see any of the other teams right now. Maybe the Eagles down the road when I they start getting so. their feet under them, <laughs> but I don't see any. I don't see them losing the NFC East right now. That could change later on. Somebody gets hurt. Some other things start happening. But anyway, the Patriots, on the other hand, they only look good in one game. They only look really good in one game, and that was the uh, Jets game, where they controlled everything. Well, the, the, the Jets could game, run on them, though. The, the Buccaneers game was all Belichick. That was defense, defense, defense. And the weather. Yeah, and I, I just, I, they didn't really look that good on offense in that game, to be honest with you. Maybe at the start of it when they were doing the quick ins and outs and all that stuff. Uh, the game against the Texans, though, really surprised me. I They needed the Texans to just start being very ultra-conservative and screwing up left and right for them to come back and win that game. I really don't see this team being as good as what Boston Radio thinks they are. I really don't think so. No, no. Um, the road team is 4-0 and against the spread in their last four meetings. I'm thinking that number goes to 5-0. and I'm going to the Cowboys uh, laying the points. Uh, I'm doing exactly the same thing for the reasons that you said. I mean, the Cowboys have one of the best offenses in the NFL. And the Houston Texans' Davis Mills looked good against the uh, Patriots' defense. Uh, so I'd be interested to see what Dak Prescott and the offensive weapons of the Cowboys will do against the Patriots. I mean, the Patriots have trouble getting into the end zone, and I don't think kicking field goals constantly will help you win against the Cowboys. I, I'm shocked that this game is only a four-point spread. So, oh, it's going to go up by, by yeah, game time. I, Well, right now, I'm taking the Cowboys and laying the points, like you said. Well, my last game of the week, the Las Vegas Raiders at the Denver Broncos. Denver is favored by three and a half. That's going to go up by the end of the week as well, I think. Yeah, what a mess uh, Las Vegas is in right now. And the over-under is 44 and a half. Week six, li- listen to this. Week six is the 124th meeting between these two teams. Huh, okay. The Raiders are 67-54-2 and two in the series. The Raiders have won four of their last six meetings dating back to 2018 and have covered the spread in six of the last seven meetings. I know the front office and the coaching staff is now just totally messed up because of what's happened oh, with Gruden ridiculous. over there. And the one thing that is the, the thinking in my view here is the Broncos haven't been playing that good lately. Ever since Bridgewater had got had that concussion issue, I really don't see that offense performing as well as it has been. Their defense seems to be leaky at times. So I'm actually thinking the Raiders aren't may not win this game, but they're going to at least keep it close within a field goal. So I'm doing the Raiders plus three and a half. Okay. All right, let's summarize our week's picks here. I'm taking the underdog Minnesota Vikings against the Carolina Panthers, who are favored by one and a half points this week. I'm also taking the Dallas Cowboys and laying the four points against the New England Patriots. And I'm going with the underdog. It's weird saying that. The underdog Arizona Cardinals against the Cleveland Browns, who are favored by two and a half. Well, my picks for the week. I did the Cardinals-Browns over 50 and a half. Cowboys laying the points of the four points against the Patriots, and I did the underdog Raiders plus three and a half, and what should be a very interesting game to see what Strange exactly game. happens yeah. there. Uh, as always, these picks will be put up on the blog after the show publishes, TurnpikeSportsRadio.com. Click on the blog button, you'll see them in print form. Feel free to comment on them. Feel free to contact us with your own picks. Info at TurnpikeSportsRadio.com. Follow us on Twitter, Turnpike Sports. Facebook, Turnpike Sports as well, and also on Instagram, Turnpike Sports Radio. The book report is next, so stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports.
With some of the best promotions and offers in the sports betting market, PointsBet simply stands out. PointsBet is the only U.S. online bookmaker to offer points betting, where every yard, every point, every goal, even every play matters. Same game parlays, good karma payouts, early payouts, and exclusive game day promotions and guarantees for all sports. PointsBet offers more bet types than any other bookmaker in the world, offering a unique set of markets that aren't available anywhere else. And now PointsBet is offering one of the best sign-up offers in the sports betting market today. New customers signing up with code BET21 receive two risk-free bets up to $2,000. Get up to $500 back if your first fixed odds bet loses, and up to $1,500 if your first points betting bet loses. That's code BET21 for two risk-free bets up to $2,000 at PointsBet. PointsBet, it pays to be fast. Must be 21 years or older, and in New Jersey, the place of bet terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Auto Accident Help Desk is a marketing agency connecting callers with attorneys. Providers pay a fee for advertising services. I love getting my kids ready and driving them to school. But a careless driver can change your life in an instant. And insurance companies want to settle on the cheap. Auto Accident Help Desk connects victims with powerful lawyers. They fight for you. I called Auto Accident Help Desk and got help for my pain and suffering. Don't let an insurance company take advantage of you. Our attorneys fight and beat big insurance every day. Call 800-297-9766. 800-297-9766. If you've been injured in an automobile accident in the last six months, you owe it to yourself to make this free call with no obligation. We're available 24-7 to help you get the money you deserve for your pain and suffering. Auto Accident Help Desk helps accident victims like you every day. Call 800-297-9766. 800-297-9766. 800-297-9766. Turnpike Sports Book Report. The Turnpike Sports Book Report is brought to you by BorgataSports.com. Your favorite casino is now your favorite sports book. Available anywhere in New Jersey, BorgataSports.com. Sign up at BorgataSports.com using our promo code PIKE, that's P-I-K-E. Make your first wager of $20 or more and you'll get $100 in free bets. That's $100 in free bets when your first wager on Borgata Sports is $20 or more. Get into the action with BorgataSports.com. Must be 21 years or older and in New Jersey to place a bet. Terms and conditions apply. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Welcome to another edition of the Turnpike Sports Book Report, where we discuss the news and notes from the sports books around the country. We've got national and state uh, sports betting reports, uh, legislation, uh, launch updates, as well as a whole bunch of deals to talk about. But I think this week we are going to start talking numbers. And uh, I understand some records have been set. September was a good month for uh, records. All right. We have, and I'm going to start off with the uh, the state of Iowa. Iowa set a couple records in the month of uh, September. Uh, state handle record of $210.4 million. That's total handle. That's wow. a record. Wow. Uh, previous monthly record was $161.4 million set back in March. Boy, they smashed it. Yeah, now that that was a good jump from uh, what seventy two to one hundred eight. That's a that's about maybe a thirty percent jump, maybe more. Yep. Um, let's see. They also had two other records, which were kind of interesting: a record mobile handle and a record retail handle. You don't normally hear too many retail handles being set anymore, okay. except maybe you know the places where mobile betting is not prevalent. A record mobile handle of one hundred eighty six point five million dollars. Okay. In the month of September. Uh, previous record uh, was set back a couple months back. Uh, the uh, total the total handle was two hundred ten point four million. Eighty eight point six of that was the mobile handle. So that corresponds with the record setting level of one hundred eighty six point five million dollars. Okay. Yeah, they're they're getting closer to ninety percent mobile handle, huh? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, they also had the uh, a retail revenue record set. The retail sports books generated four point two million dollars of the state's five point seven million dollar revenue. Okay. That's a that's a huge amount of revenue coming in from the retail books. Hmm. One of the reasons for it, it can be explained by the low hold, the win rate. Uh for the month of September they had a two point seven two percent uh win rate. Which <laughs> is amazing. very low. Yeah, very that's low. Amazing. Uh they actually had while they did set a record in all those other categories, mobile, total, handle and also retail they also were the lowest hold percentage 
in any state this year. Interesting. Interesting. That's, that's kind of a kind of a balancing act for that. Wait, a lot of smart bettors in Iowa. I guess they're uh, taking money from the books. Well, let me tell you, the bettors took money from DraftKings in Iowa. DraftKings came in with a negative one point nine million dollars in revenue. Wow. Okay. So uh, that was kind of kind of an interesting little uh, you know dichotomy there with that. I've never seen DraftKings come in with that much of a negative revenue. So uh, kind of something to watch in that. I, I was interesting. I was very interesting. Yeah. It's it's kind of a very um, different type of state, especially. I think it's more college than pro betting, but again, it's you know they're they're setting records and they're they're doing extremely well with that. Uh, as a matter of fact, Iowa just got a new sports book. Oh, okay. Uh, Circus Sports. Before oh, I move wow. on to some other numbers, Circus Sports launched in Iowa this past week. Uh, they are now in three states: uh, Nevada, C- Colorado, and uh, Iowa. All right. So I always got another uh, mobile option. I'm waiting for them to come to Jersey or Pennsylvania. That'll they're, be fun. They're expanding little by little, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, but still, none can beat their their retail book in Nevada. No, no, no. no, no. no. Circa maybe ha- may have the best sports book of everybody. Sure. Uh, let's move over to West Virginia and talk about their numbers for a little bit because they set a record too. Oh, okay. Uh, they have a record revenue record in West Virginia. The uh, Revenue was six point oh two million in revenue uh, in September. It's the highest highest monthly revenue all time in West Virginia. The previous high was five point six eight million in January of this year. Okay, I don't know what was going on in in West Virginia either because it looks like the two college sports betting states, Iowa and West Virginia, seem to be setting records in September. I'm assuming it could be a lot, just a lot of football betting. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I did probably. And one other note think. with uh, West Virginia, they just reported also their first week in October, fourteen point three million in handle. That's not really that much of a story, but with that fourteen point three million, they became the twelfth state to reach one billion dollars in post PASPA handle. Wow. Okay. They join, and here's the list: uh, New Jersey, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Indiana. Colorado, Michigan, Iowa, Tennessee, Virginia, and Mississippi. Wow, okay. So uh, they are the 12th state to hit the $1 billion mark. As a matter of fact, from what I understand, there's a couple states getting closer to the $2 billion mark, too. So uh, that's something to watch coming up. So that's the uh, next thing we got to watch, which state hits $2 billion first, right? Yes, yes. Uh, Let's see. Other states reported the numbers, Virginia, Montana, uh, Oregon. And the only reason I bring up Oregon is because of the one sport. Oh, and it's okay. it's fascinating to me. Oregon and Colorado table tennis, right? Constantly fascinate me with the table tennis industry. Hey, I don't know, but what is it? Number six again? It's usually number six. Table tennis was the sixth top yeah, sport again. Usually, yeah. Handle of one million dollars. Boy, Oregon and Colorado, they love their table tennis. Listen to this: one million dollar handle, twelve thousand seven hundred and twenty one bets. Revenue of 53,000, win rate of 5.35%. The number of unique players betting on table tennis was 556, and the average bet was $78.72. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm just amazed at the uh, the uh, table tennis industry there. It's just kind of wow. I, yeah. I, I, I don't get the fascination with the sport. Uh, I, I mean, tried doing that one time, you know, during the height of the pandemic, and it was uh, – it was streaming, so uh, I, I took a look at it. You, you, I, I didn't see the players. I just saw the uh, you know ball going back and forth. The guy one one guy had his back to the camera and things like that. So it wasn't like uh, great production value, but you know I just couldn't get into it. Well, you, you know production value when you're streaming it through an app. You know if you're sitting there on your phone and you're watching it, you know is it really. Someone threw a webcam up there, yeah. and that's, that's what I was watching. The, the one thing that matters to me, if I'm watching it on my PC, I want kind of better quality. But if I'm watching it on my app and I'm on something really quick that I can just see what's going on, mm-hmm. that's actually not a bad way of doing it. Just throw a webcam up and just let them throw that stuff up. I'm sure you're going to start seeing stats for all these different things. Oh, sure. I'd love to see the table tennis stat stream. Yeah, that, hey, That's no. a fast game. That's Look, a very fast game. A lot of people are betting on it, so they it's you know they need that information. So, yeah, no. But uh, I, I can't get into it. Well, let's move on to some launches. I think we just talked about Circus Sports uh, launching in Iowa. We have retail sports betting launching in Louisiana. Yes. yes. Uh, Betfred. Uh, the, it's only one place, right? It's, it's, a, a, it's a tribal uh, casino. Tribal yeah, casino. Okay. 
uh, the Paragon Casino Resort in Marksville, Louisiana. All right. They opened their their Betfred Sportsbook, and they they had the 3 p.m. local time, October 6th opening. All right. Uh, by the way, the uh, tribe running the uh, re- casino is the Tunica Biloxi tribe. Okay. Uh, and the reason why this is kind of interesting, it's not a commercial casino, so... All the commercial casinos in the state are still waiting on regulations to be approved. Okay. So because they're Native American, they, they got don't, the they jump don't apply. On they got the jump on everything. All they right. were able to launch it. Uh, they actually have the sports book located as part of the Draft Room Sports Bar. That's okay. a very cool name. You know, I've noticed there are two setups for a uh, sports book. Yeah, I have one like the Borgata, which I'm, you know, you know, I'm accustomed to it. It's more like a sports bar. It's more like a restaurant. If you walked in, you would think it's a sports bar, but they have uh, TVs everywhere and that they have windows at the far corner. And then you have the stadium style uh, sports books where you just have all the TVs and it's uh, the seats are set up like a stadium. So um, I'm, I'm, I, I think I like the stadium better, but, you know, just for kicking back for a burger and a beer and Borgata style is the one for you if you like that stuff. Actually, you know, it depends on how you're going to be watching it. I mean, if you're just popping in to watch a little bit before moving on to another place, Mm -hmm. the sports bar style actually works a lot better than stadium seating, I think, anyway, because I get too comfortable in those those leather seats in the stadium. Oh, yeah, yeah. So when I want to just pop in, grab a beer, watch the game a little bit, move on to the next place, I like standing up, watching everything, mm-hmm. you know, so uh, really it depends on how you're doing the day of watching the sports. If you're going to be there all day, stadium sports seating is kind of better. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because also with the waitress coming by, sure, the wait staff, sure. I should say, my apologies, but, uh, you know, it really depends on how you're going to be watching everything. We've got also over in Wyoming now, we have a live retail book going live at the Wind River Hotel and Casino in northern Wyoming. Okay. Northern Arapaho tribe. All right. Uh, they uh, also recently signed similar deals. Uh, Amelco. This is the sports betting tech company. Okay. They have deals with tribal casinos in Michigan, number of casinos in Colorado. Amelco, which is surprising to me, is now live in seven states. Wow. Okay. Uh, it's a, and this is how they describe it a 360 full service ecosystem. Offering sportsbook, retail, iGaming, esports, and complete player account management. This is Amelco. This is what this Amelco is the tech does. Company. Okay. Yeah, they're they're the underlying tech to run everything. Sure. So they are now live in seven states with this new tra- access deal with the Wind River Hotel. Uh, and let's talk Connecticut. Uh, we've been we've been watching this Connecticut sports betting launch kind of for the last month or so, and they finally went live with retail. Yeah, yeah, in Last week. Um, both casinos, right? Yeah. Foxwoods and Mohegan Sun, right? And we're going to be looking at 15 retail sports betting locations opened by the Connecticut Lottery. No timetable on when they're going to be. Actually, not even a list of locations. Okay. They've, they've talked about them, you know, the Hartford Center. So, so for the time being right now, there's Foxwoods, there's Mohegan Sun, and we're waiting for other retail locations throughout the state, meaning like OTB kind of right. things. Like going, but uh, mobile is still, we're still waiting on mobile, right? Mo- mobile and iGaming. Okay. Uh, they just announced October 12th would be the beginning of a soft launch. So we're, we're going to see exactly what's going to be launched right away. Again, the they, normal, normal states, normal time frame with states doing a soft launch is like three to four days. They're doing a full week. Soft launch begins October 12th. The full launch is going to be, the formal launch, I should say, official launch, however you want to phrase it, is going to be October 19th. Okay. All right. And they've got a, they've got all the uh, mobile sites. Also, I think it's going to be uh, Play Sugar House with okay. the Connecticut Lottery. Which I have on my phone because I, yeah, I use it in New Jersey. Which you do not have because they're not a shared wallet. I know they're not a shared <laughs> wallet, but, you know, that, that's, you know I'm, I'm always driving through Connecticut, and I have, I have Play Sugar House in New Jersey on my phone. I, I wish at one point in time in the future, you know, when I, if I have Play Sugar House, I'm in Connecticut. I, I hope I could switch it over, but I don't think that's going to happen since there's different platforms. Involved. Well, you're going, you're going to see Play Sugar House, DraftKings, and Fandle. Okay. Well, I have Fandle on my uh, phone, Again, too. no shared wallet. No shared wallet. So, um yeah, but Connecticut also has iGaming, too. Is that going to start up pretty soon? That will or? be launching. That's launching, too. Same huh? way. All October right. 12th, soft launch. October 19th, formal launch. No word on poker yet. Mm-hmm. So, But the iGame, the, the online casinos are going to be la- doing the soft launch along with the mobile betting. So it's going to be kind of an interesting uh, way to launch everything. I don't know exactly 
how and if they're all going to launch on the same time, same day kind of thing. But again, the the soft launch period starts October 12th. A couple other launches to talk about. We have over in the Apple Store, we have a new uh, social first sports betting gaming platform. In the Apple Store? In the Apple Store. I've never been in an Apple Store. I don't have an Apple phone, so I have no reason to go into the Apple Store, but it's a very crowded store in the mall. Well, when Every I, when I say Apple, Apple store, store, it's not just the actual physical okay. stores. It's okay. The, okay. That's what they call the online. So, well, well, the, the, the Apple uh, Store online. But let me. But the Apple Store, it, will that be available in the Apple Store? Yeah, you walk in. If it's uh, okay. legal in the States, that's it. That's we have a company called Lucra Sports. Okay. It's a uh, social first sports betting platform. Um, basically, it takes the social media environments of like Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff, and you can share your betting with the community. Oh, okay. So uh, I never share my betting unless we're doing the pick segment. Well, here. after I, you I make never your bet, share, because the, the, I think uh, BetMGM and I'm I'm thinking Borgata. They have a way after you make your bet. They said uh, share your. Share your picks yes, on on, yes. on social media, and I, I never share my picks on social I'm media. I'm seeing a lot of fantasy companies. I don't even know do what that, that looks like. I don't think I've ever seen anyone share their bets. On well, Lucra Sports media. has launched their via the Apple App Store in 37 states. Uh, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because of who the some of the investors are. Uh, you have the Milwaukee Bucks owner, all right, as one of the investors. Uh, you have top ten tennis player John Eisner. Okay. U.S. Women's National Soccer Team star Julie Ertz. And wherever really you see uh, Julie Ertz, you're going to see Philadelphia Eagles tight end Zach Ertz, yep. who's also another investor. Great. So they got some big name investors into uh, the social sports. So you're scene. saying um, if if you have an Apple, I don't I don't have an Apple no, device, so yes, I can't take advantage of it. But no. is, is it in Jersey and Pennsylvania and things like that? Uh, you'd have to take a look and see exactly okay. what it is. All but right. uh, one last little launch to talk about: the American Gaming Association launched a new. Uh, paper, I guess you can call it, or a publication, uh, the Gaming CEO Outlook. Uh, this is a, uh, a publication that combines a measure of recent growth in the industry and future expectations in the industry. And it, they did this in uh, con uh, conjunction with Oxford Economics. Okay. Uh, I took a look at it. It's a very, very detailed uh, examination of the industry, both current and in the future outlooks. And i I recommend everybody who's interested in taking a look at how the industry has recovered, where it is now, and where it could be going. Take a look at this gaming CEO outlook paper. It's pretty, uh, pretty uh, impressive work there. Interesting. Yep. One other launch I got to talk about, and I thought this was funny. Pete Rose. Yes, he has a podcast now, or he's going to have a podcast, right? He launched his own sports betting yeah. podcast. So screw you, Major League Baseball. Yeah, I'm going to talk so, betting. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he he will be launching Pete Rose's Daily Picks via Quake Media. All right. Six episodes a week. Rose will be offering picks on a variety of sports, including baseball. Okay. Um, so uh, congratulations there. And also, what what was the uh, other story he was involved with? Uh, uh, I, I think he's going to do a ceremonial first bet somewhere. Table game bet. Okay. In, um, Hard Rock, Cincinnati. Yeah, Hard Rock, Cincinnati. That, that was the report we saw. <laughs> so, uh, hey, good for Pete. He's embracing the gambling lifestyle like he didn't before, but you know now he's really well. Now know, he can really capitalize. That, on yeah, it. no, what the hell? You know, for a while there, that was not something to talk about, but now he can talk about hey, it. Hey, like if the MLB is making uh, sports betting deals and putting lines out on the broadcast and doing alternative broadcasts, guess what? Pete Rose could do it. Well, let's talk a little deal making in the industry here. We have two interesting deals that were made. Fubo Gaming announced a deal. A multi-year sponsorship deal with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Great. Now, keep this in mind. There's no sports betting in Ohio. Yeah, I wonder how close that is in Ohio. It's not close at all. Not close at all? Not okay. close at all. all right. I mean, it, it's. let me put it this way. They're about as close as Massachusetts. Yeah, okay. So they're Years there, away. but they're not there. But Years away. Don't know. Years don't know. away. Hopefully, I think Ohio will pass sports betting before Massachusetts does. Well, yeah, probably. I, I can't tell you what year. But I can tell you they will they will probably pass sports betting more. But Fubo did a deal with Cleveland Cavaliers. You're going to see Fubo branding all over Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse starting this season. Additional visibility on their TV, radio, and social channels. Basically, similar deals to all the other sports betting stuff out there. Okay. Um, Points Bet did an expansion of or an extension of a three year deal with the PGA Tour. You're going to start seeing Points Bets odds. 
on the PGA Tour linear and streaming broadcast on the Golf Channel and Peacock. Okay. And they're planning to do some uh, incorporations of these statistics on the NBC broadcast. They haven't okay. done that yet. We saw that bet cast on Peacock from PGA. That was very good. That was very good. I like that. And, and you know what? They did it seamlessly, too. Oh, no, it was great. I liked it. I mean, there there have been, at the beginning of when they, people started doing the bet cast, they were just shoehorning the stuff in. But yeah, I, I yeah, think no. I think points bet took their time with it, crafted a really good betcast version of yeah, how no, to I do thought, these sports. I thought that was very good. I hope they do more of that. And another uh, quick deal here: Genius Sports did a deal with the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, okay. Uh, this one is more of a branding type deal for Genius. Uh, Genius has the overall deal with the da- with data for the NFL. Uh, they are going to be working with the Eagles at Lincoln Financial Field. Throughout the bars in Lincoln Financial Field and lounges, you're going to see Genius Sports branded statistics being flashed across the screen. Good, good. Everywhere you see a uh, sports bar or lounge in Lincoln Financial, you, you're probably going to see a Genius Sports branded ticker or Great. some other stats that pop up. So it'll be kind of fun to watch how they do, uh, how they work into the. Uh, the fans into everything. They're trying to get more fan involvement in the uh, sports betting uh, side of everything. Uh, DraftKings uh, did a deal to open a new office in Las Vegas. I, I thought they already had an office in Vegas. Is this a new office or is this an expanded office or what? What's this is a on? major new office bringing okay. a thousand employees to Nevada. Wow. Okay. Ninety thousand square foot office. All right. Uh, and it's going to be the second largest after its Boston headquarters. Okay, they've been there for a while. They've done deals with UNLV, and also yeah. they have a deal with Golden Nugget Online, which is going to be interesting to see exactly how they can get back into Nevada. And uh, they, they also do not do fantasy sports in Nevada, just so you know. Okay, so this is all about just uh, you know getting them getting a foothold there. Sport Radar did a deal with the Big Ten. Okay. Uh, they're going to be relaunching with the Big Ten Network. Sport Radar and Big Ten Network are going to be relaunching the Big Plus. The Big Plus. It's spelled B1G. You know the the the, the logo B1G for Big Ten? Yeah, yeah. It's B1G Plus. So it's a digital channel. Okay, is this going to be a subscription type of thing? Subscription type okay. of thing. Right. And also, it's just going to be a channel. There's no sports betting involved with it. Okay. At some point, there probably will be. All right. But right now, they're just relaunching it to uh, do 1,500 live streams of different Big Ten events. All right. And it's it's a channel that was there before for the Big Ten, but now they're bringing it back using Sport Radar's technology. Okay. And Sport Radar is also going to help with the advertising, all that stuff. Great. Uh, one other quick set of deals, all done by the same company. This company called Low Six. It's a free-to-play game. Okay. Free-to-play oh, yeah. developer. All right. They did deals. Jacksonville Jaguars, PGA Tour, and the European Tour. Wow, they had a busy week. All for free to play games. The with the Jacksonville Jaguars, Low Six is doing Ultimate Jags. Uh, now, is this a predictive game kind of thing? It's sort of okay. It's a combination of you know answer questions and trivia as well as do predictive stuff. Okay. Uh, same thing with the PGA Tour. They're going to be doing a free to play game. That's also going to be in conjunction with Points Bet. All right. Yep. It's part of the Points Bet extension. Uh, so they're going to be doing free to play game to enhance. You know, fan engagement by doing weekly prizes. Uh, with the European Tour, it's a pick a map uh, called European Tour Picks. Every uh, day during a different tournament for the European Tour, you have to answer questions, do predictive uh, uh, outcomes, that sort of stuff. It's it's all the same stuff, but the fact that they did these three deals in this short a time is pretty amazing to me. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's it for this week's book report. We had a whole bunch of other stuff to talk about, but didn't have the time, go to the Turnpike Sports blog, turnpikesportsradio.com, click on the blog, and you'll see these and other stories that we didn't have time to hit in print form. That'll do it for us this week. We'll see you next time on the Turnpike. 